Hey, what's going on, Beowulf Nation? It's I'm Beowulf, back at it with another video. So today's video is all about the new 2021 Yamaha GP 1800R SVHO. Some of these issues I've been getting sent videos of that's just, I mean, it's typical of something new, of new stuff that's not been used would happen. So let's get all into it, but first, Hit the like button. If you haven't been subscribed to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button. I'm Beowulf, do all types of videos, primarily jet ski videos, but we do got some other content going on with the channel. If you're already subscribed, hit the bell notification. You get notified as soon as a video is uploaded. And let me give you guys a little bit of a view of my Beowulf edition GP 1800R. I was riding the ocean yesterday, so. Usually I have my fan running there, drying off all the gear that I rinse, getting all the salt off of everything. And then I open up different compartments to just let it air out. There wasn't any really any water in there, but I always leave stuff open. Like I got the hood on my SXR 1500 open, always venting out. And I uh, kind of keep it so that just make sure everything dries out with the fan running, whatnot, inside the garage year round. and. I never leave anything with a cover on it because I always want stuff venting. If I'm going on a long road trip, it's usually when I stick the cover on so nothing uh, gets wrong with damage and stuff. Everybody's different. I would, if you're inside where you're having a garage, I leave it always open just to let everything always air out so there's just no moisture sitting anywhere. I went out riding yesterday, got the boost gauge working, running about a little over, I think I have to edit the video seat, but a little over 15 PSI. Depth finder on here, which is really cool. Got a hidden switch to turn that on. And yeah, so this is this is the Beowulf edition. GP 1800R, we got the carbon fiber coming down the front of the hood. Got the carbon fiber gauge pod. Got the awesome jet trim, got the ankle mats, carbon fiber, custom seat, jet trim, everything, man. This thing is just, I love this game. We got this in carbon fiber, just looks killer. Got the snake skin for the Reva Racing Sponsons. Got in the Reva Racing handlebars, got the snake skin right there. Really dope. So let's talk about what's all these video clips and whatnot I've seen with people getting the new 2021 Yamaha GP 1800R SVHO. There's a fair amount of people that taking delivery of them. Some people in regions where you can't ride yet. Um, I had a, if you haven't seen some of the videos in the past, I had a pre-order on one and then I canceled on it for multiple reasons, but one of the biggest reasons was if there was going to be any issues with them coming out. Now, a lot of people aren't aware right now, Yamaha has a huge shortage of parts um, of almost everything where you're waiting a long time. And that's what I was a little afraid of if something new was because of that, or it could happen with my own ski right here. Something could go majorly wrong and I might be just waiting and can't ride. Luckily, the good thing is Yamahas are dependable and they aren't sitting there always being worked at. So it's not something to be really sweating it. The more sweating is something new, like some new technology that hasn't been used on the ski. It could be anything. Um, I'm gonna do a whole nother video, but like for example, uh, my dad owns, he lives in the Midwest, and he owns a Durango SRT, and he has his bone stock. And he got it the first year it came out, right? Now they use those transmissions in the Jeep Grand Cherokee to SRT. And he had basically right when that warranty ended on his vehicle, like 36,000 miles, his transmission went out. The Durango SRT, if you're not aware of it, you know, it's the, it, very fast for uh, Dodge or the SUV. And it's bone stock and the transmission went out. So it's one thing if it was heavily modified. So it's like, oh man, that's crazy. He had to wait, he had to wait almost two, two and a half months to get a transmission so he could drive his vehicle again just for commute for work. So that's what I was, I'm a little aware of, and especially right now, it could be like shortage of computer parts. I mean, there's just a shortage of everything right now to get because of everything going on in the world right now. That was a, a little afraid of. So anyways, I'm kind of sitting there, you know, you see some of these people getting these skis, and like I said, they're sitting there not being used. So I see this clip, 
And I posted it uh, like a week or so ago before filming this on my Instagram. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, it's I am underscore Beowulf. And I posted this and a lot of people didn't catch on uh, what I posted in the video. Maybe because they're, I'm just really observant, I don't know. But there is a video of a guy in the black and green GP 1800R 2021 SVHO riding, I think it looks like he's in the ocean. And he's riding around and the lanyard is pulled out of the, the handlebars and the ski is still going. That's like, you know, because it, it's funny because I made a big thing. If you've seen the video, why I canceled, I talked about a bunch of things like, you know, how the, the whole control system is different than what the previous one that's right behind me is. That there should be a little uh, concern. And there was somebody comment on the video, oh, it, it won't have any issues and boom. I was right, and there was issues. And having something like that happen where the ski is still running with the lanyard pulled off. So let's say you're riding the ocean, you jump a wave and you get thrown off. Well, that ski is still going. But if you're like any distance off in the ocean, I mean, and you have nothing, if your phone, everything is in the ski and it's going the other way, you can swim as fast as you want, you'll never catch it. That's something they'll be a little bit of worried about if you're in a, uh, you know, in a situation, it could matter any type of water, lake, river, ocean and you fall off and the ski still running, you could hit somebody, somebody could die. Uh, the ski could go flying into shore. We could sit here all day and think of all the possibilities of something that could happen, but that's super scary. Uh, roll the clip so everybody can see what I'm talking about. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow, then it's done for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, yeah. For the, for the record, yeah. For the record, yeah. For the record, for the record, yeah. For the record. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I gotta up price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. A6 all the hay. I won't get involved today. Got lost in the ball and days. I'm flipping the balls. I'm flipping the, flipping the, flipping the. On record, off record. I still count wins when they got it. On record, off record. I let them take advantage. I was wallet. On record, off record deals. Tell them talk to Colin for the quote. On record, off record. I still want the act, not the ghost. Running through it with the young and blue and less impressions. I'm so coming to it, I've been giving yeses when I shouldn't do it I complete ejected, but the moves are loosened And I'm barely moving, but I'm still gon' boost them I can't work on winners when I know you're losing So I work the winners and they throw the Guess I have to pivot, shooting the bazookas for the facts I need racks, paper, cash, fuck a tax That's a joke, tell them laugh, Uncle Sam Fuck out the back, Brody plot, we get a whack Contract, give me the max, I got lab on my back You ain't that, then it's raps Whoa, 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 for the record I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable for the record, you ain't tryna grow, then it's done for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't tryna link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, yeah. For the, for the record. So you see the clip, it, it is pretty wild that something like that happened. If you have a ski and you have an issue of that or any, you, rule of thumb, if you have something wrong with your ski, stop riding it, get it fixed. If it takes a long time, wait and get it fixed. Don't keep on riding. It's kind of scary because it's like, what if the ski doesn't even shut off, shut off if you press the stop button? And when I saw that, I'm thinking to myself, how glad that I waited. Now, I'm not saying I would ever get the new GP1800R or trying to knock something's wrong with Yamaha. I mean, it could happen with any brand. It could happen even with an older ski. 
It could be Kawasaki, Sea-Doo, Yamani. This could happen. When I saw this, it's not to tell somebody not to go buy the ski, but to be aware that there's something going on. So if there's one and it's caught on video, you imagine there's uh, quite a bit more and people can't get the, the voice spoken to be known that it happened. So that's why I figured I made this video is it's not knocking Yamaha. It's not knocking the GP 18R. It's not telling you not to buy one, but it's just bringing you aware of something going on that people should be knowing about. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh, I have to make a video about this. And it's not trying to put down Yamaha. But my little concern is, is with Yamaha, most of the time when they have something new coming out that they'll let a select people go see it, it's usually people that are somehow getting something out of it, being paid. They're getting paid on their website. So they're told by Yamaha to say something. Well, a lot of those people won't bring up of issues, like something like this is wrong. I wouldn't tell you not to go buy the ski, and I'm not telling you to go buy it, but be aware that there is something going on with it. And I feel that this race of every time that somebody, everything, something new comes out, you gotta go running to go get it. And to me is buy something you can afford. Don't go out and think there's a game of like, look what I have and you don't have. A ski like this is perfectly fine and in some ways I think is better than the new one. And we'll get to where that's at. So there's other parts on the ski that I've seen. So we don't know if it's factual stuff I've seen posts where there's parts that were promised of what was improved on the new GP 1800R for 2021 is leftover stuff from 2020. Now that's a big concern there too. And that you're buying something that's promised that these parts have been improved where it's a whole different part number. And from what I've seen on being sent to me by people that it's stuff from 2020. Now that all relates again to where I said there's this shortage of parts. Is that the reason why they did it? That they didn't have what new is coming in? So a lot of stuff with like how Yamaha is built is it's stuff is made in Japan and they're built in the United States, which is a cool thing. I greatly appreciate you know, Kawasaki and Yamaha that are built in the United States. Really cool thing. Glad they do that as a company. Then we'll see other brands that are made in other regions. It's cool giving American people jobs and everywhere people should be getting jobs. I don't know what country, so I'm not trying to make it picture like that, but it's something as a plus. So it's kind of the logistics of something going from one part of the region to the next makes it hard, but still doesn't make it proven that it's right, that it was done like that, that somebody got a part that wasn't what it is. Now there's a lot of skis that are perfect how they come. For example, in front of me, I have my 2017 Kawasaki SXR 1500, right? Nothing has changed from 2017 to 2021 besides color, graphics, everything's the same. So it shows when that was designed by Kawasaki that it wasn't rushed and that nothing needs to be improved. Now the only thing that there is a flaw with that ski, everything's perfect with that ski. It has one flaw and it's the fuel pump. If you take it apart or you jump high ways with it, it'll start falling apart and like to get the fuel tank out, you have to pull the engine out. There's no other way. So I've seen people where they're using different clamps when they put, you know, replace the fuel pump or do stuff so it doesn't fall apart. Now you'd be shocked that like Kawasaki has, obviously knows that exists that they would fix it. Now I've seen just recently a company that came out with something or I'm going to call them and I'm curious to find them more info about it. But there is an issue with that ski. And like I'm getting at, it doesn't matter what you buy, there's gonna be some issues. So just, there's no like, no issues, right? But this ski has been, I got like what, 50, 50 something, 52, 51 hours on it. And I, there was one little issue that the company was an aftermarket park, they fixed it, which I greatly appreciate. I'll be talking about it in another video. But otherwise, anything comes relating with Yamaha, no issues at all. So that's why I'm a little shocked. That's why I wanna make this video. I'm not gonna say I'm a diehard Yamaha. I'm not diehard Kawasaki. I'm not diehard Sea-Doo. My goal is with a jet ski is every time you go ride it, it's gonna do what you want it to do. Meaning, it doesn't mean it's gonna be the fastest, but meaning it's reliable. Like you going out there, you get to the boat ramp, it's gonna turn on and go. Cause a lot of regions, when it's real busy in the season, like right now it's a little slow, 
So like yesterday, I went out riding in the ocean. It was almost about 70 degrees, but nobody was there at the boat ramp. So it was real fast getting out. Well, let's say you're someone where you're waiting a while to get in there. The last thing you want to do is get up there, take it off the boat ramp or off your jet ski trailer and the ski doesn't fire up and turn and go or you're getting pulled. Because a lot of people don't realize, and they'll have to do this a whole nother video, but a lot of people don't realize is they like to ride really far. Like go as far as you can, like it's a, so I call it safaris. Well, if you broke down, unless you got somebody who's willing to be going very slow to tow you back, uh, you have to call a tow service out there and it's not the same as towing your car or your truck or your SUV. It's super expensive. Now there's, Programs you can buy where you have a, month, a yearly and you get a limited toes, right? Which does work out. But that's the thing to think about when you're going on these, I call safaris. Not telling you, you buy your jet ski, you can do whatever you want with it. I'm not telling you guys what to do, what to buy or what. I'm just telling you a little uh, advice because I know I've had a call a tow service to tow me in when I had my RXPX 300. It sucked. You're sitting there waiting for a while. And it sucks when you're out there by yourself and it's like the off season where no boats are out there where nobody could wave you down and you're just drifting and the sun's setting. I was like out there dark. Yeah, it's not cool. So uh, it all worked out, but that's why I'm t letting people know. So that's something to think about and how far you have to go to be pulled in. So when you see this, it's more not like the ski's running, right? With this video where I'm talking about with the lanyard, the scary thing is if you fall off it and, and it's still going because it could be, I remember this is a, a funny story. Out. Well, it wasn't funny when it happened. But I remember this from my childhood. So my parents have a lake house and I had my first jet ski ever was a 1997 Yamaha Wave Venture, right? Three person, uh, well, Wave Runner, jet ski, they're all the same. And I had some friends out. And so we had three, a total of three people on there. Would be, with me, it'd be three. And I, and I was trying, when you have a bunch of people on the ski, well, especially this one, you have to lean a certain way or you're all gonna fall off. So we're going through a turn. I'm telling everybody, you know, you gotta lean this way or we're all falling off. Well, we, they fell off. And then the lanyard wouldn't disconnect. So I was being pulled behind the back of the jet ski behind the pump. And I remember how at the time I'm like yanking and for whatever reason, it was not unclipping to get me off. That was a little scary because I remember in school, there was a girl uh, when I was in junior high, there was a girl that somehow got in some type of jet ski accident. Somehow, her, I don't recall if it was her feet or hands, somehow got stuck in the pump and took off. I think it was her fingers. I think it was her fingers because she fell off. She missed like half her fingers. I remember that, you know, I was like, oh. that's what was going through my mind when I was being pulled from behind. So that's something to think about, <laughs> you know, like if you fall and it's still going, but there's a chance of something happening, you can't shut it off. And that's why I figured to talk about this in the video. Hopefully this person gets it figured out. It doesn't happen to more than one person. But what I would appreciate of people who are subscribed to the channel, if you have an issue with your, your SeaDoo, Kawasaki, or Yamaha, we're talking newer ones, like, you know, in the, the, you bought them in the last three years, because we can't talk about stuff that's old, you know, like, I don't want to say old, but older, where it's this wear and tear that happens over age, right? So if you bought a ski in the last couple of years and you're having some type of issue that's relating with the manufacturer, uh, you can contact me on my website, iambaywolf.com. That's probably the best because you don't have to be signed up to some other, uh, you know, like Instagram or Facebook kind of thing. You can do it on there or you can uh, DM me on Instagram. Um, I am underscore Beowulf. You know, send me a video clip. You like what I showed in this. Tell me what's going on. I'll make a video talking about and let your voice be heard because I know the manufacturers watch the channel. Sidu, Kawasaki, and Yamaha. It definitely gets your voice heard, and that's probably the best way to fix stuff like this. And that's thus why I made the video. It's not knocking the brand, but they gotta realize that this exists and it's not gonna be buried somewhere else in social media where somebody doesn't get their voice heard. And I hate making videos like this, but when I see this, I would hate to be more seen at a story on the news that somebody got killed or very hurt because of some situation like this. And that's thus why this video is made. Sometimes the truth hurts.
it's just a shocking thing that it's stuff like that, but it's again, you know, when something new comes out, these kind of issues happen. And I hope all these people, like there are some of these parts that they put wrong that people are all concerned saying, well, I just bought this ski and now it all has to be ripped apart. And it kind of sucks, you know, cause you're buying something new, getting it. And, and that's why I, and I've learned my lesson. Like when I got my RXTX 300, they improved a lot more stuff on 2019 to 2020 than they did in 2018. So it was like one of those things you should have waited a year. Now, not everything is like that, but some stuff is. Uh, if you look earlier on 2017 and 2018 with the Yamaha GP1800, not the R, there were some issues. If you Google stuff about that, there was some like crazy stuff that to myself, I'm glad I got the 2019. If I got this in 2018, it might not have been the most intelligent thing. And definitely they improved a lot of stuff with uh, 2019. I think like to, for the GP 1800, in my opinion, the best years to buy is like a 2019 or a 2020. Well, that's just me. Uh, just with some of the, the parts on there, the looks, I think it's the better year to buy. But that's just my opinion. Everybody could buy Buy whatever makes you happy. To me, because I get all the time people are like, hey, what should I buy? What should I get? You look what, at the end of the day when you put it in your garage or wherever you store it, if it's stored on the water, on a, you know, whatnot, that it makes you happy. You shouldn't buy something that's not going to make you happy. That's just my two cents. But I figured to share this. Um, and if you guys, like I said, share, share stuff with this. Make sure you share this video because it's the more people see this, the more make Yamaha realize. But like, what did we do wrong? Was it something wrong when it was assembled? Is it something wrong with the design of what they're having? It's not obviously happening to a bunch of people, but I saw this and I'm like, I saw this. I'm thinking to myself, wow. I dodged the bullet buying one. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I wouldn't get the 2022 or the 2023 with the GP 1800R. I'm also possibly looking at getting a, a Yamaha FX SPHO. I'm not sure, uh, but it's kind of when I'm looking at it, what I want to do. But if you're new to the channel, like I said, hit the subscribe button. Existing subscribers hit the bell notification. You get notified as soon as the video is uploaded. This is some of the new merch, the GP 1800R hat. This does match the 2021 GP 1800R. I got a, a black one with the green and white the hat. So check that out. I got a bunch of different merch. Some stuff discounted, uh, discontinuing all the c the RXPX and the RXTX merch. But check that out at imbaywolf.com. Then also too, I have this really cool setup with Amazon where a bunch of stuff's listed on there and it's called the website to go to that is amazon.com slash shop slash I am Beowulf. Check that out. I just hope these videos definitely help people. I like to change up everything and hitting the like button definitely helps with the video. And again, be mighty and keep strong.